Hey, this is Christopher with the Exorcism Team from the Lighthouse Church. And I thought I would bring you a story that I found in Win Worley's book, Freedom from the Hosts of Hell. Freedom from the Hosts of Hell, a promise for today. And this story is found on page 122. And it says, I was hopeless. I was a hopeless schizophrenic woman, 45 years old. And I thought that this would help some people. Um, if you're battling with mental illness, you're battling with things that are going on that you don't understand, God has the answers. I don't, but God does. So let's listen to this story. I was a hopeless schizophrenic woman, 45 years old. The first demon cast out identified himself as suicide in a very deep, loud, and clear man's voice. He even controlled my bones and muscles. At one time, this was so complete that I had to stop driving an automobile. Without warning, my accelerator foot would be slammed to the floorboard. floorboard. Then I would have to seize my foot, yanking it free while screaming. I can't kill myself with five kids to raise. I probably wouldn't die anyway. Reared in a Christian home, I was sure that there were demons in the world. Still, it was not until I was in a mental hospital in 1970 that I discovered I had them in me. When a psychologist asked if I heard voices, I told him I did. Earlier, I had mentioned this to a group of university doctors who were checking on a malignant tumor. Being on a tranquilizer Librium for four months brought drastic changes and caused me some brain damage. I told the doctor I had that I heard a still small voice from the Holy Spirit because I was a born again Christian, saved at the age of 11. By now, I had difficult, difficulty hearing that voice. There was a clamor of many disordinate screeching voices. One was a man's voice, determined to drive me to suicide. There also was a woman's voice that had taunted and ridiculed me for as long as I could remember. At other times, there seemed to be 20 or 30 other voices shrieking at me from the outside. When my doctor informed me that all people did not hear voices, Something came up in my throat and choked me. Then suddenly it dropped back deep inside of me. It was a year and a half later before I was prepared for a pastor and his wife to actually begin to deal with the spirits within me. However, from that day, the demon knew I was aware of his presence and he stepped up his harassment. Bitterness was the second demon to be dealt with. He was like an octopus with powerful tentacles that squeezed me around my middle. After I thanked God for about the 12th time for taking my husband, one at a time, the tentacles slowly released me. I had lost my husband when he was only 37, left alone in my fourth month of pregnancy. I had to rear four very young children, John 10.10. 10. After my release from nearly a year in a mental institution, I married again. When my husband was transferred to Missouri, we brought a house that was full of demons. By this time, I had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In spite of two miscarriages and the loss of my 18-year-old son in a car accident, I was doing very well. Then suddenly I became a human yo-yo, what the doctors label as manic depressive. Flying high one moment, the next I would be plunged into horrible pits of torment. There I would be, there I would contemplate death or suicide. In my spirit, somehow I knew I would win, but I cried out, oh God, win. My emotions seemed to be totally out of control. One day I had a visit from a newly saved woman from our church. After looking the house over, she remarked that it seemed she had been here before. Then she remembered that this was a place where she had once come for seances and fortune telling sessions. When she left, I began to experience torments of hell. I called my brother and his wife in another state and told them what had happened. 
They then bound the spirits in me and in the house and loose spirits of peace to come into me. Immediately I was at peace and stopped yo-yoing. I went over that house from top to bottom and asked that the blood be placed over every nook and cranny. While I was having so many problems in the house, my husband had flown me back to Wisconsin to see my psychiatrist. This did no good. But using the biblical methods cleared up the problem. We lived there for, we lived there for five more peaceful months before moving to Arizona. After moving to Yuma, a spirit of death began to torment me. Night after night, I was kept awake, screaming and begging God to take me home. Still another unclean spirit entered me after we came to Arizona. This vile thing had me convinced that my husband was in love with our doll and using it for sex. Now it seems so ridiculous, but control by a demon can be very overwhelming. Everything around me seemed to be to verify and reinforce this delusion. People would remark that my husband certainly had an unnaturally close relationship with that animal. This and other things tortured me, yet deep inside I continued to fight against them. When I pleaded with my husband to get rid of the dog, he absolutely refused. Friends set a date to deliver me from the spirit of death and began fasting and praying to that end. I have become so obsessed with death and dying that I read and checked the daily obituaries. Then I would weep inconsolably because these people were gone and I was still here. The evil spirit put up quite a battle, but finally fled. This left me limp and tired, but free from his driving torture. At the same meeting a bit later, I was sobbing with relief, thinking it was almost over. I beseech my pastor to explain how Jesus could stand by and watch me go through such awful misery. He said the Lord could do nothing further for me. By his death on the cross and resurrection, he had already done all that could be done. My heart sank. But then he told me that I must take God's word and stand on the authority that I had as a believer. Believe the word and act upon it. I was warned that there were still more battles ahead. I printed verses on healing on poster board and placed them throughout the house. My life was revolutionized. The very last prayer prayed for me that night was for me to have peace as I took a five week trip back to the East. There was glorious peace in my mind, emotions, body and spirit. It was as if I were actually resting safely in Jesus's arms. For the first time in my life, I was not being overwhelmed by all those awful yelling, screaming voices. Within two weeks of the return from the trip, the battles erupted again. At this time, I was still more affected by what I saw and felt than by what the word said. Increasingly, however, I was becoming more conscious of the importance of the Bible in this life and death battle with Satan. I still desperately desired to kill my husband, Thal, which was still a sore point with me. I daydreamed about using a knife on him and rubbing his blood in my husband's face. This was a kind of weird fantasy that had seized me before I was committed to the mental hospital. I sat up all night clinging to a chair to keep him from seeking out an ice pick to attack my own son as he slept. I knew I could not kill my husband, so the next best thing seemed to be to destroy that hated canine. Evil spirits of resentment, anger, and hatred manifested, pitching me to the door. Once again, I desperately called for help to get these alien beings out of me. I was still unable to sleep with my husband often. One evening, the dog came into the family room and I put his head, I, and put his head in my spouse's lap between his legs. I exploded and seized a knife to carve up the animal in my mate's. Fortunately, the Lord intervened and I threw the knife down, dashed out to the car and took off. I distinctly remember the Lord cautioning me not to drive too fast. I cried out to Jesus for help. 
Very plainly, the Lord indicated the woman I should contact. I argued with him that she would, she would be on her weekly out-of-town camping trip. My mouth spewed out demonic cursing and profanity. When I got to the friend's house, she was there. Immediately, I bound up the evil spirits and loosed God's peace on me. This entire prayer session absorbed several hours, and when I returned home, my family was already asleep. I was exhausted by my escapade. I hoped that I could go to bed and sleep without too much panic, poking and twitching in my extremities. Rarely, I slipped into the bed alongside my mate and a demon called sex began whispering to me. He spoke of gross and obscene things happening between the dog and my husband. Both physically and emotionally, I felt that I was about to fly apart. To drown out the demonic lines, I shouted to the Lord Jesus for help. This awakened my husband. When I asked my husband if the charges were true, once again, he quietly assured me that they were all false. I shouted out for the third time and agonized, Lord Jesus, help me. Just as he had entered a year earlier, that unclean spirit shot out of me. So she got, this, this lady here is telling me about how her process has been for her to getting delivered from these spirits. <clears throat> My husband had gathered me into his arms as I began to sob from deep inside because of the blessed release I felt. I slept restfully for the first time in months. This wicked demon had kept me so uptight and stretched out until it was like being held by rigor mortis. Now the she voice in me became more insistent and opinionated about everything going on in my life. Also, I repeatedly rebuked the spirit and demanded cessation of his harassment. He became more and more difficult to control. Many times I would plant my hand over my mouth to avoid blurting out the vicious things to my family and friends. This was especially directed to, toward the people this spirit particularly hated. It was really a struggle for me to keep from acting out the almost irresistible demonic impulses. Once a familiar spirit manifested and impersonated my husband's first wife, we had just added on a new room and I, and I asked some friends to come and anoint the room and pray over the whole house. They looked for articles that might be used by the demons as grounds to attack us, and then we destroyed them. When entering the master bedroom, I moved to one side of my friends, and my friends were on the other. As prayer began, there were vibrations that gradually increased in intensity. This was my spouse's first wife's bedroom, and here she had committed suicide. Workers decided to bind the spirit and commanded to leave the place. I stood riveted to the floor. As the spirit left, he pressed against me, beginning at my feet and working up my body. I became ice cold and was thrown violently against the wall. Crumpling to the floor, I went into a fit of hysteria. Immediately, one of the ladies prayed for the Holy Spirit to fill the room and cleanse every piece of furniture, drapes, carpet, etc. Later, I realized that this evil spirit was the one that had caused me, that had caused all of the electric poking, muscle spasms, twitching, and jerking to keep me awake at night. This woman went through some, some torment, some complete torment. It was getting harder to have company and to be nice to them. A professional in the music field, I often was invited to play at different places. However, it had become almost impossible to play either organ or piano in public without being forced to beat the keys. For years, I had pleaded with the Lord to send someone to me who could tell me what was wrong with me. A guest speaker came to the church and his topic was on inner healing, the inner man. I was prompted to go down to talk with him and ask why we wanted to be dead. My mind was spinning at high speed. And when it was my turn to speak to the man, I leaped on him, beating and pounding with my fists. My pastor ran over and bound up the spirits. I calmed down enough to return to my seat. After I was classified as mentally ill, people were very friendly. Strangely enough, following my healing, they turned their backs to me. 
walking away so as not to be too close or greet me. It hurt some, but in a way I thought it rather funny. I watched for the reactions, especially from those supposed to be wonderful Christians. Actually, after I had left on and attacked the guest speaker, I could scarcely blame them. I then requested a conference with the speaker. In the discussion that ensued, he informed me that I undoubtedly had a split personality. The demonic side of me, which I called Susie, demanded a conference of her own. She had me call people and then and tell them she was out. This, then she made an appointment herself and took over the conversation at the conference. Until the time came for her session, she was busily rehearsing her own version of our life. I learned much by listening to her. I recognized several experiences stemming back to the childhood when she had appeared and took over. Finally, there was an explanation of why I had done and said so many puzzling things in my life. Susie hated company, music, both of my husbands, the children, etc. Shortly before we left home for her appointment, I mentioned that we should call my husband. We did not really know who would be existing after this was over. She agreed, and although I called, she did the talking, and not very nicely either. I asked a close friend to come, come with me to the meeting. During Susie's session, she told her story, revealing, reveling in being free to speak out. After we had been there about 15 minutes, my husband walked in and came over to kiss me on the cheek. She yelled at him not to touch her. I immediately remembered many times at home when he would come in and I would stiffen up in revulsion. I had never understood the confusion and anger, which moved me to resist this affectionate gesture of a kiss. After my husband was seated, Susie interrogated our counsel <clears throat> and demanded to know if I was saved and also if she was saved. He answered affirmatively because we were the same person. She became very incensed, shrieking like she had never shrie shrieked before and certainly did not want to be like me. Neither she, neither next, she called me a lot of nasty names. My God, my God. <sighs> the following months were agony and hell personified. The ruling spirit of schizophrenia reigned supreme. There was always a group of demons inside harassing me and seeking my destruction. At times, the physical pressure would become so heavy that my heart would drop to 50 to 60 beats per minute. I would drag myself to the phone to call friends for prayer to get relief. Finally, I attended a camp, and while 200 were praying, the spirit of schizophrenia was cast out. I thought this surely would end the nightmare. Sure enough, I enjoyed days and nights of rest and sleep. I was overjoyed. Unfortunately, after two full months, the spirits resumed talking with me, presuming, pressuring me, sorry, pressuring me to become bitter, to hurt, to kill, etc. After four months of this, I knew that these demons were merely some stirred up inside of me by my previous deliverances. They were neither as big nor as strong as the ones who had already been cast out. I sought the Lord to continue the root causes for these spirits, having such a free reign inside of me. My soul, mind, will, and emotions was still manifested and under continual assault. My daughter wrote telling of a work in Minnesota headed up by those who are former psychologists and psychiatrists. They had discovered biblical deliverance was all they really needed to set people free. Thank God they threw away their other books and began to move in the spirit. When I went there, it was discerned that there was a spiritual cord on me. It was connected with the sins of my ancestors. These included unforgiveness, alcoholism, and occultism. They gave the demons legal access to come and go as they pleased in me. Workers cast out the spirits then took authority and cut those cords in Jesus' name. In the spirit, I saw the cord cut, and each 
end being cauterized, permanently closing off the passageway. Next, a wounded spirit manifests, causing me to weep uncontrollably and bitterly. My heart was aching and felt as if it were going to burst and shatter into pieces. Again, I went for prayer and it was cast out. Five years later, I'm still free. Exorcisms, deliverance works. When I first learned about the power of the word and how to use it against demons, it would take days, weeks, even months to defeat the foe. As I grew in grace, I became more confident and adept and began to defeat the enemy myself. Persistence in attacking the enemy is absolutely essential. If you give up the enemy, we'll win the battle. This is why scripture says you will reap in due season if you faint not. During these 12 years of becoming free, I have learned to be, I have learned to treasure the promises. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7. So I hope that this gives you some hope if you are battling with schizophrenia, if you're battling with mental illness, there is deliverance. God will send help. He will send people your way. He will cause your paths to cross with those who are able to help you. We thank you for listening to this exorcism team discussion and this story from Wynn Worley in his book, Freedom from the Hosts of Hell. A promise for today. If you don't have this, I highly encourage you to get it offline. You be blessed. This has been Christopher. Thank you. We want to thank you for tuning in to the Lighthouse Church Inc. Exorcism Team discussion. We hope that you're getting a lot out of the teachings. You can always reach out to us through exorcism at lighthousechurchinc.org for any questions or comments or things that you would like for us to teach on. You also can check out our social media pages, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. There you are going to find many, many teachings that will help you grow and help you to stay set free, but also help you to become the exorcism minister that God is calling you forth to be. Thank you, and God bless.